Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming and listening to our topic. And I'm Xiang from Alibaba Cloud. And today I will be together with my colleague, Tian Yi Tang, to give a, a detailed topic of Euros. Uh, we we did some talk in the uh, maybe some te technical uh, uh, sections such as uh, LSF and uh, another kernel summit. But uh, I'd like to give a general brief, uh, sorry, general detailed review of Europe uh, in the open source summit too. Uh, so first, for people who never heard about Europe, uh, let me give a brief introduction to Europe's file system again. Uh, so what's Europe's? Europe stands for the Enhanced Read-Only File System. This was started from the later 2017 uh, and formally available since kernel, uh, Linux kernel 4.4. Uh, so we are, uh, it, uh, it aims as a modern, flexible, uh, high performance block based uh, in kernel immutable file system and uh, it is uh, uh, highly uh, maintained. It is block based and, uh, but it is not quite block device based because we have another uh, uh, access way such, uh, such as FS cache. Uh, and uh, on this data is strict, uh, strictly block aligned, uh, no extra data, uh, so no extra data movement and uh, I/O amplification. And we have FS DAX and direct I/O for uncompressed data. Uh, although it is simple, but more, uh, it is more than uh, just a archive format. We leverage many in kernel possibilities from uh, the kernel developer perspective as much as possible. Uh, so a uh, minimal core Europe has uh, the following features, such as uh, unencoded data and built-in UUID and volume available, uh, label, sorry, uh, and direct I/O and uh, some chunk duplication and uh, extended attribute and uh, ACL and built-in uh, layer uh, layering support, so we can uh, we can have a minimal meta and uh, many data blobs. Uh, and we have FS DAX support to share uh, cache memory between host and guest. And uh, the following is the application uh, who is using Euros as, uh, as the part of uh, their solutions. Uh, so uh, four features uh, uh, compress Europe's support. So, so these this features you, you can you can uh, turn on or turn off uh, as your option. So the first is we have some transpa transparent compression, but we but we can choose uh, this on a poor I node basis. So you can uh, compress some file. You 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 can you can uh, you can leave some some files uncompressed. And we have a rolling hash compre uh, compressed data deduplication. And we have uh, the tail end compressed data, uh, data deduplication, uh, such as, uh, uh, sorry, uh, like fragments, which is much like a squash FS. And we also have a tail end compressed data inline. So the 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 most uh, the most part uh, the most tail part of the uh, data file will be inline in the inode. So we call it the tail packing, and that is a typical application uh, which uh, y which use uh, compressed Europe, such as uh, Android po uh, project, which is uh, well known. So uh, here's our open source community. Currently, we have several maintainers and reviewers for the, our internal uh, code base. As you can see, it is quite open uh, project involved with many vendors, and uh, uh, and Europe is in integrated into several ecosystems. The most uh, Linux distribution. Uh, uh, recently, we have CentOS Stream Nine and uh, uh, several bot bot loaders, uh, in, uh, but, but Grub is still working in, in progress, et cetera. Et cetera. Uh, here's our document, uh, documentation website. Note that it's still incomplete, and we will go on finishing this pro uh, website over the time. Uh, so although it is 
still a small open source community. Currently, we already have several companies participated in Europe, such as Alibaba Group, ByteDance, Coupad, Google, Huawei, Oppo, etc. Uh, so, uh, so the uh, why we introduce in Europe? Uh, so the the history is uh, uh, Android has several read-only uh, partitions, which behave as a system of uh, firmware, which means the Android code can only be changed by the way of an update. Uh, but uh, the, their firmwares become larger and larger, so so more free uh, more free space is needed on uh, our brand new Android device, especially on the low-ended device. So uh, so uh, we want to uh, we want to do compression, uh, but uh, the dynamic uh, runtime performance, especially in the uh, low memory scenario, with constant heavy uh, heavy memory per per uh, uh, so sorry uh, pressure. Uh, so so that that is much important. So but uh, all previous one don't work very well uh, to meet our performance need as a, a competitive uh, product on market. Uh, for for more details, you can see the paper uh, uh, on ATC uh, 19. So our goal is uh, we'd like to uh, design a simple but effective uh, approach to cover various uh, in multiple use cases from kernel file system developer perspective. Uh, so, uh, two, uh, so why using Europe? Uh, so two of the main uh, reasons are security and simplicity. So it has reduced on disk metadata complexity. So, so it has faster uh, build performance compared with the general uh, general uh, file system such as EST4. So uh, it also has smaller overall file system size and it is easier to merge file system from uh, several sub image uh, or some uh, some other data set. Uh, uh, you uh, so so uh, so we have some uh, uh, read write splitting so it avoid a necessary code based coupling so it, it has uh, less intricate bugs and a smaller attack service. Uh, so so it is much more data tamping prevention. Uh, so if you look uh, into some general file system like AFT4, so, uh, so uh, many uh, CISPOS issues may be derived from the crafty malicious uh, image and uh, less common, compatible or redundant, uh, redundant for, uh, for the immutable image use cases on disk formats, which in, uh, uh, increasing uh, Increase uh, code decoupling. Uh, so combined with the about uh, extra twist uh, right path, uh, in, uh, as well as journaling, it's journaling challenge the overall stability again. Uh, so uh, I'm not trying to say the uh, Europe is bugless, but uh, for the image use cases, uh, Europe can be uh, if if there uh, if there are some bugs, uh, Europe can be fixed quite easier since it is less twisted. Twisted. So on the bottom side, it is just a PUC of a malicious ext 4 file system, uh, which can panic the kernel. So uh, uh, I I, I um, try I tested it in the last year. So another reason is the flexibility. So uh, we have, we both have internal file system driver and the user space implementation, and uh, it supports both de uh, block device and file uh, based uh, distribution. And uh, we have a profile compression uh, configuration, uh, so so the file can be uh, compressed or uncompressed, and uh, it, uh, we can use different algorithm for for each file. So uh, the file system size can. Can, can do dynamic resizing, so you could just uh, append uh, metadata or data directly. So it is much much easier to update the image. Uh, so we also have uh, so so uh, so, so mo for most of features, uh, we can also ena enabling these features or on disk format on demand. So uh, and also uh, since it's, uh, on disk format is quite simple, so so you can arrange your on disk layout as you need. So uh, as long as the metadata can be parsed uh, properly. Uh, so, uh, so the last one I think that is performance. Uh, for more detail, uh, 
uh, I still highly suggest reading into uh, the link at the bottom. Uh, so here it's just the summary. So the first is that our we have uh, block aligned data, so uh, no extra error uh, error waste. So uh, also that we we have fixed size output compression, so it will have better compression ratios as well as efficient IO uh, utilization. And uh, we have some cache uh, IO strategy for the decompression, so we to minimize the memory footprints. And we have in place decompression, uh, in place decompression, so so that uh, uh, to avoid another compressed buffers and the points in the cache line as much as possible. And we have deduplication, so uh, to avoid deduplicate data I.O. to and minimize image even further. Uh, so uh, at least uh, uh, just uh, a performance test uh, in, uh, maybe uh, quite a month ago. Uh, but I will uh, do a CI maybe, maybe later uh, on the website to uh, to refresh the te uh, test, uh, test result cycle. Uh, so, so here is a test uh, setup. As you can see that um, it, uh, uh, here I just uh, uh, make a, compa a comparison with the squash FS uh, because uh, people might uh, might need to uh, get a general uh, get get a general view of the how uh, Eros behave. So. Uh, uh, for Eros, our metadata is uh, always uncompressed. So, so I I, ju uh, I just uh, turn off the uh, Squash FS metadata compression. So, uh, so uh, that that is the main main difference of the image size. So you can see uh, if you you uh, config uh, so. If you uh, use the, almost the same configuration, so it, uh, Eros uh, almost have a smaller image size. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this is uh, our sequential access. And uh, um, I think the uh, uncompressed, uh, sorry, uh, uncompressed data access, maybe, maybe uh, there are some noise, but, but, but th that doesn't matter. So for the compressed use case, uh, you can see the Europe's uh, uh, read, uh, read, read performance is better. And, and that is a, a random access or a small random access or, and a full random access. And you can see uh, uh, Europe always uh, over, uh, almost performs than the squash FS. And uh, uh, another, another workload is uh, we benchmark a single large file. Uh, so we use a data, uh, we use a workload of Cecilia. Uh, so you, uh, as you can see, we, we, we can, uh, uh, I show. Uh, I first show the image size. Uh, so, so uh, yours is uh, is also smaller than the squash FS. And and uh, uh, it is uh, the uh, FIO results uh, because that uh, it is only a uh, one file. So so I use FIO to test the uh, sequential IO. Uh, so you can see uh, Europe is overperform uh, than the uh, squash FS and uh, ran this is a random IO, a small random IO and four random IO. Uh, so uh, so let me uh, talk more about uh, uh, the core. Uh, Europe's on disk format. Uh, so uh, our on disk format is quite simple because, uh, 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 sorry, uh, so almost all Europe's on disk uh, structure is well aligned and laid uh, within a single file system, uh, set, a single file system block. So it will never cross two blocks for performance. Uh, for for the random performance, so uh, on the uh, left hand side, it is on disk super block format, which contains all overall file system statistics and uh, root uh, root inode NID. Uh, it is much uh, like a uh, root inode number. So uh, each inode, uh, inode is aligned in an inode slot, so that the basic inode information can be in the same block and be read at once. Uh, at the right hand side, uh, there are Europe's on disk uh, inode format, and the short uh, extern, uh, extended attribute can be kept just next to the core on disk inode, as well as uh, some, some index, such as chunk index and compressed index, and, uh, the, uh, and the remaining inline data. So, um, 
so you, you can see that uh, our inode size is pretty small, such as uh, uh, 30, uh, 32 uh, bytes or, or 44 bytes. Uh, here is uh, Europe's on disk uh, directory format. Uh, Europe's directory consists of several uh, directory blocks. So, uh, so for uh, that is also for random access. So, so uh, each block contains two parts called uh, uh, the rent part and the name part. So that with uh, such overall design, users can do name lookup with uh, binary search. Uh, which makes Europe's more effective than the other uh, in kernel read-only file system. But, um, uh, but you, as you can see, that that is quite simple. So uh, you, you, can always, uh, use, uh, you can always write a simple implementation. Uh, so so the, the following is our uh, recent feature, but that is incomplete. Uh, the first one is uh, Europe uh, supports uh, deduplication in two modes. Uh, such as uh, for, for the uncompressed file, we have the chunk-based data deduplication. Uh, so, so you can dedupe the data in the 4K, uh, in the 4K unit. And, uh, and the red one is a, a global compressed data deduplication. So uh, we, uh, if, if the data is uh, compressed, you can use uh, this way to deduplicate uh, 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 in a file or across the files. Uh, so uh, 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 there are some uh, there are some uh, some details, but uh, 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 but uh, but that is uh, so sorry. Uh, but but that that is uh, over result. So uh, on the on the on the left uh, on the left hand side, I use uh, the two snapshot of uh, Wikipedia. Uh, of the first uh, uh, 100 pages, but that is a, two, a 20 days difference. So, so the uncompressed size is uh, 1.8 gigabytes. Uh, so you can see that uh, compared with the uh, uncompressed, uh, and, uh, sorry, undeduplicated and uh, the uh, and the uh, uncompressed one, Europe has uh, has many uh, as many better results. And the left hand side is uh, uh, the uh, Linux kernel test uh, result, uh, the source code uh, test result. Uh, so our first case is a shared disk among node. So our, our uh, obs observations are pull on needed layer for each container image start, uh, startup is slow and the most and, and the most uh, underlay base layer can be public available, uh, su uh, such as a, a installing package, etc. So the difference of uh, 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 of the minor, uh, minor security versions are quite small. So our idea was to introduce a shared disk image to store most uh, common base layers and use Europe's uh, compressed or uncompressed duplication to minimize uh, image and IOs. Uh, so on the left side, uh, on the left hand side, it is a original container startup flow. But, but on the right hand side, we use a shared, deduplicated shared cloud disk for the coming, for the common underlay layers, and only uh, the upper layers are needed to be pulled. So, so let, uh, this layer can be pulled combined with other ways, such as layer pulling and uh, other technologies. Uh, so here is a test result of deduplication between slightly different minor versions. As you can see, uh, Europe can have much smaller size compared with uh, compressed and even compressed OCIs. So, so we can see more versions uh, in, a, in, a, in a larger disk. Uh, another, another one is uh, Europe supports native layering. Uh, so. You can you you can uh, convert uh, the uh, the the OCI layer in parallel to get the each blob, and uh, then you can you can use uh, the last uh, commands to generate uh, minimize minimize metadata and use this this these blobs to to mount uh, uh, merge the Europe's. Uh, so that together with uh, overlay FS, you can get a uh, root FS. So uh, our second case is a layer granularity FS DAX memory access. Uh, so uh, firstly, you could use uh, what type of PMAM for uh, container image to eliminate uh, uh, 
gets the pitch cache totally. But the problem is uh, uh, such as small snapshot like uh, FSDAX with a traditional file system can only do the image level deduplication conveniently. So uh, if you look into uh, that's three three VMs, so uh, their their memory cannot be shared on the host. Uh, so. Uh, uh, so snapshot FSDAX memory will have uh, several times extra memory overhead due to some minor uh, image updates, such as uh, add a layer or modify, uh, modify some layers. So, so it will become a burden to maintain on a, another 4K ma mapping table for snap, uh, snapshot like FSDAX memory access in order to fix that. Uh, so. So our solution is uh, uh, due to our sub sub image merging. So so as for Europe, so it supports uh, supports its technology, and each PMAM memory region can be formed by multiple sub image. So so that uh, uh, each memory uh, each memory region uh, uh, can be shared on the host. So so that uh, it will will have a better. Uh, better overall uh, memory, uh, better uh, smaller memory for footprint on the host. Uh, and uh, the last case is a uh, C pitch cache sharing. On the left hand side, it is the same issues uh, as, as as the previous one. Uh, and on, uh, and so so the snapshot like approach uh, also have the same same problem. On the uh, on the right hand side, even over the FS itself cannot share page cache on the same file access across the uh, the different layer. So our solution is uh, Europe has in house patch. Uh, currently, it has in house patch to support uh, our page cache sharing because that is not quite uh, clean. So uh, so on the same node, on the same node, uh, it will only have the the same page cache for, for each for, for each file, for each unique file. Uh, the last one, I, I'd like to uh, add some, some stuff uh, such as uh, accelerator, because that the newer uh, in, Intel, Intel machines has some IA accelerator. So that pro provide very high throughput compression and decompression. But it uh, leverage, uh, the, uh, it uses the algorithm that is uh, deflate. But uh, that is a sh much short uh, sliding window, such as four kilobytes. But uh, so Europe can use this uh, use this technology to offload the bank data access. Uh, currently, I did some uh, some performance test with uh, their user space library, uh, but there are some still some issue to be resolved uh, because that the QPR uh, uh, haven't integrated into most uh, distribution. Uh, and our internal decompression support is still ongoing. And uh, that is a test result uh, compared with the so uh, software uh, approach. So uh, as you can see, the IA and definite uh, accelerator performance is very close to the, the, the faster uh, uh, algorithm such as LD4. But uh, the, uh, the, the IA image are much smaller than the uh, LD4 HC. Uh, and that this is quite even uh, much close to the, this standard. So uh, that, that is our test command. Uh, so, so as you can see, uh, we can get benefits from the IA. Uh, so, uh, uh, and next I will hand over to my colleague, Tian Yi, for the rest of the part. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, thank you. Um, thank you for the introduction. And um, my colleague Gaoxin has already in, uh, introduced like the technical details and some features, capabilities of the RFS. And I, I'm gonna cover sub several use cases and end-to-end -end solution we already have to fully utilize like the potentials and the capabilities of the RFS. And so when we talk about ERFS, the read-only file system, it's pretty natural to think of container images. That's our first use case. And at Alibaba Cloud, our solution for this use case, uh, the first one is a tariff stamp shutter. So uh, as we know, for normal OCI image, we have uh, the mean target Z or tar format. And when pulling them, 
Uh, first, we're going to fetch the whole blob from the registry and store them into the local content store. And after that, we're going to have a custom uh, a built-in applier, which is walking differ to to decompress the uh, to do gzip d and do enter the file. And instead of doing that, we want to change the file file type from the ex t4 to erfs. There are several things we got to do. So firstly, we got to change where we we uncompress the content. To do that, we have a remote differ to do instead of the walking differ to do the unpacking progress. So we so as we can see in the picture right, right here, uh, our input originally is a is a, is a targz stream. Without modifying the internal code of uh, code of container D, we have a remote plugin to do this unpacking process. So we're gonna do the mount .tar erfs, which is a helper provided by the erfs kernel, and it's gonna pro, uh, pr the output is gonna be a erfs layer format layer content and the loop device which helps redirecting the traffic to the layer and after doing this for each layer we can uh, the first benefit we're, we're going to get is going to we, we will not do the untar anymore which, which which will reduce a lot of time when when we are first uh, first first time booting the image and after we already have this in this layer we're going to have something that can understand this layer which is the remote snapshotter we have which is the tarfs snapshotter this will utilize the uh, ERFS layer and the loop device to, to provide the merged view of the root FS which we finally need to run a container. So here, instead of just doing a plain overlay, overlay mount, since we don't have a mount helper right now, which is already in the progress, we're gonna first mount mount the, the read-only section of this overlay mount to a, a temporary directory for the read section of the of the layer and do overlay mount finally for the runtime to do that. And uh, here I'm gonna show a brief d demo of this case. Okay, as we can see, uh, I'm on an elastic computing machine and here we have uh, two files. They are just some pretty simple sample pod and container YAML. And as we can see, just a WordPress image and there's nothing special about this pod. And we're gonna just, just gonna do a CR, CR control run of this pod. Yeah, it's gonna take one sec. Okay, now it's, now it's booting. Now this uh, process is happening. There are image pulling in background, as we can see in the log of container D. Uh, for each layer, there are makeup.erfs being evoked to convert this layer. And uh, here, this time we do a little hacky thing, cause like, uh, since ERFS doesn't have to be layer by layer unpacked, sorry, I'm gonna pause for one sec. Because like since since ERFS doesn't have to be unpacked layer by layer, just like overlay over, overlay have to, we can do this in parallel. So we do, did a little hacky thing to in container D to do this unpacking process uh, parallelly. That that's why we can see multiple multiple makeups makeups progress is being run. And in, th in this log, we can see like we have a loop device first layer. And now this image is unpacked. We can see the containers running. And we can EXEC into this container and see the base file system is, is, is running perfectly. And yeah, and it is it is running. As we can see, we are running stream v2, so we can see the pause process. And I don't know. Okay. Yeah, we, we're gonna we're gonna see the amount of since it's run C, the whole mod is happening on the host machine, and as we can see, the the root FS of this container is just an overlay mount with only one layer of the uh, lower, which is of ERFS type type mount, which and read only, and is overlay with another file, which you can do some other extension on the upper layer, since we're preserved preserving the overlay structure. And for the, for the content blob for reference, we're gonna keep track. Uh, we can see like it's still storing the original blobs in the content store. So like if you wanna switch the snap snapshotter back to the original overlay BD or device, uh, overlay or device mapper or anything else, you can still do so without repulling the image. That's the that's the advantage advantage of this solution. And uh, yes, I don't know why I paused for so long. Okay, yeah. Now we're redirecting into the directory to actually see what what type of data is being unpacked. 
So as we can see, uh, for each layer, there's only one loop. Th th this file is only storing the device name. It's just a plain file. And apart from that, we have uh, data storing the ERFS content of the layer. And for the final layer, uh, the 20, 25 one is the upper layer, which is, which, which is actually being run. We have a temporary directory, this lower directory, which is mounted to, mounted to the ERFS. I'm just re redirecting into this directory and to find out and show this mount is happening. And now we have we have two upper layers because we have one for the sandbox. I'm gonna skip a little bit. Yeah, now we're gonna show like we just stopped the pot. And we are gonna change the configuration of container D. Like I said, we're gonna switch the snapshot back to overlay uh, to show that with, without any modification, without repulling the image, since it's a WordPress, it's kind of big. So like after switching, we just rerun the same part again. We can see the pulling progress is it should be super fast. Uh, it's, uh, all right. Uh, uh, we are we are we are we are gonna see the pulling progress is it's gonna be super fast because we don't have to repull the whole content from the content store just the same target disease being unpacked in another way to overlay FS. Okay, so much for uh, th 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 That's it. Okay, I'm gonna come back to the... Yeah, f from this solution, it's kind of obvious. There are some obvious pro and con. So the first pro is that uh, you don't have to do, if, if, you, if you don't wanna do this parallel unpacking thing, you don't have to do any hacky thing to the containerd main code. You can just deploy your remote snapshot here and remote differ to achieve this ERFS view of the root FS. That's first pro. And the second one is that if you wanna do this way of parallel unpacking to ac accelerate the booting time, you can do so since like ERFS doesn't rely on layer by layer unpacking. But the cons is also kind of obvious. So the first one is that there will be multiple devices being created since we're gonna linear loop for each layer. So if you have multiple images running in parallel, like you're gonna be have flooding loop devices happening on the node, which should be fine uh, in, in terms of performance, but it's still gonna be messy in the management. And that's the first con. The second con is that this solution doesn't support lazy loading, which is kind of the, the fancy thing to do right now. So for this two cons, we have solutions by introducing the uh, overlay BD. Overlay BD is also a solution. Uh, it's one of the solution to do the lazy loading, but uh, we're gonna use it to solve these two cons I mentioned. Uh, just a brief introduction. So overlay BD is a user space uh, service. It's a running daemon, which is, will utilize the TCMU model provided by the kernel, and it will, it will provide a virtual device for uh, which which user can mount and all the uh, all requests coming to this device will be redirected back to this overlay BD service running in the background. It can do anything it want with it. And overlay BD is gonna what overlay BD is gonna do is gonna with this capability is gonna provide a lazy loading functionality. Like it's it's not gonna fetch all the uh, data it or all the blob from the registry. Instead, it's gonna lazy load when this IL, IL request comes. Gonna fetch the corresponding chunk from the from the registry. Uh, and after combining or uh, including OpenBD into the solution we had uh, just introduced, we can solve the first problem. Since like now for each image, instead of having one device for each layer, we can have only one device for each container or each image. And we're gonna see a short demo of this solution. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I am on a uh, Elastic Computing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, now I'm on Elastic Computing. Can I stop? Sorry. Now I'm on an Elastic Computing Machine, and uh, just like we just had, right? Too small? Oh, you can't hear me? <laughs> Sorry. Too small? Sorry. 
，你可以。<笑> All right, Jana, as we、uh, similarly, we're going to just have two simple container and pod YAML.、Uh, it is just a, a WordPress image as we just had, and there's nothing special of, the, of this image. And in this setup, instead of, instead of the original solution we had, we're going to have a service running background. As you can see, we have the service running right here, and and in this setup, we're gonna have a, a custom overlay snapshot here with the redirection happening background, and when we are unpacking this image, instead, uh, I'm gonna direct back to this. Sorry, one sec. So instead of、uh, traditional unpacking, we're gonna generate the metadata locally. So after we already had to fetch the blob, all, all, the, all the necessary stuff from the registry, we're gonna convert them into the format we want to run the ERFS locally. And yeah, we're gonna, gonna, gonna show what's gonna happen. So we have a service running here, and.、Uh, We're just just gonna run this container. Ah,、uh, uh, yeah, I'm, and I, I'm gonna show you the configuration of container D. As you can see, the snapshot here we have is just overlayFS, which which is the built-in overlay overlayFS snapshot here. We're gonna run this. See, yes,、yeah, started. As we can see, like the potting containers booted correctly, and we can same way we just had. We can ESCC into this container, and we can we can see the mount of the of the root file system. Just overlay, and we can touch file. File like, and back to the host, we can check the mount structure of this container, just like we we just had like for the for the tarfs snapshot. We're gonna have the one layer overlay mount of the overlay, but and for the lower directory, it's gonna of format the tarfs as well. But the difference is that now instead of having one device for each layer, we are just only, just going to have one one device for this whole container, and now we have two because we have a pod. Yeah. So like, so 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 this SDB is for providing the lower view for the container, and this SDA is for providing view for the sandbox. And okay.、Uh, but like, there is still problem with this one because this one doesn't provide lazy loading. And since OverlayBD natively have the lazy loading functionality, we want to have this included. So、uh, after after do this process, which which I just mentioned, the, the unpacking process, the generation if we if is happening before we run this container, we first gen generate the stuff we want and store this stuff in the registry, and then we're gonna use this stuff to to provide a view locally. When we're running the container, we can have lazy loading functionality, but like that is kind of gonna cause a problem because it's gonna cause a problem, which is like a pain point for a lot of lazy, lazy loading solutions. Is that you're gonna have a separate tag for your lazy loading image, like you you have to have something referencing this lazy loading、uh, manifest, like when you when you're actually running this container. And to solve this problem. Uh, we are using a solution utilizing the referrer API, which is the, the stable API,、uh, to 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 minimize this problem. So that when we are deploying this stuff in the in the in the production, the user doesn't have to necessarily know like is it is happening. This load, this loading is happening. User doesn't have to know anything. 
you just have to push the image, and when it's running the image in this in our in the cluster we can control, uh, it's lazy loaded. They, they can they can just utilize this function without knowing this happening. And the way we did it, just it's it's it's, it's kind of hacky, but like uh, I think it's on the same the correct trend of how community community is gonna evolve. So now, like locally, we just have to change the configuration a little bit. So we're gonna hard code some artifact to look for so w when we are fetching this content from the registry. So if we, if we see a specific artifact from the registry, we're just gonna consider it uh, to be a replacement of the original manifest. And this manifest will be pointing to the lazy loading stuff we want. Now, without any for further modification, I just changed this configuration. I'm gonna stop the pod and remove all the images we already have running on this node. It's all, it's all clean. We have no snapshot running background. And we're just gonna run the same command again without changing anything to the tag of the image. Sorry. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> That's a good point. We do have a dynamic load, but I didn't wanna like, to be too hacky. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm gonna clean it again and restart. And yeah, I have the debug on, so it's flooding. Yeah, so it's booted, so it's booted now. now. It seems like a lot faster than we just had. And for the image, we can see the size of the image is reduced to like 12 MB which is only the metadata we, we, we just had. And now this blob we just pulled from the records is, is only the metadata from the, from the uh, lazy loading stuff. And we can exec into it container and see everything working. This is working, we can touch file. File. And for the mount structure we gonna see in this container is gonna be exactly the same as we just did when we are locally converting it. It's gonna be a one layer overlay mount and with the, with, with the temporary directory mounted to the ERFS to provide a read-only read, uh, view of this image. So you can see here we have, just like we just, we already had, we have two devices for the sandbox and the container and it's read-only mounted. That's the demo we had. Uh, okay. Yeah, here are the two solutions we had for 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 the container image section, and and apart from that, I want to mention a little bit about like how we implemented this weird thing. You just had you just saw because like we are the snapshot we are using for the previous demo is the overlay snapshot. So we have a. Uh, new interface of the RO driver. Uh, we have a separate interface of the RO driver included into the overlay snapshotter. Like we're gonna have this overlay BD RO driver providing the overlay view of of, of the, the temp, directory, temp, temp directory we just saw. But like this interface is still gonna be need some work, but like that's the like the prototype we had. The concept we're trying to trying to convey is that you don't have to have a separate snapshot or you only have to do this read-only section of the overlay since like finally you're gonna still see an overlay mount for the container. That's the correct trend we're gonna follow. Okay. Okay, so much for the container image part. And we're gonna dive deeper, like skip the runtime level, go down to the file system. So like Compose FS also have yeah, uh, as a building core structure of this architecture, the main benefit it's gonna get from using ERFS is that when you're having multiple images running Compose FS, even they have different ERFS metadata, when they're accessing the same file, you're gonna still reuse the same copy of the page cache since they're sharing the same OS3. And that's the main benefit they're gonna get. And if we dive, a little more deeper or switch to a different angle, we go to the virtualization section. Gvisors also have uh, ERFS 
included as its core functionality to provide a view of the container images in its virtual machine. Because like previously, when they're trying to access the file system of the container image in the virtual machine, they have to have a sec separate process, the RENC Gopher here, which is of the RPC architecture. And it's gonna be slow and it's gonna be significantly uh, bad in terms of the code booting time when you're first time booting a container. And after switching to ERFS, you don't have to have the separate process. You just have to, you just have to use the virtual mem, uh, which in, in use cases where we were booting a lot of containers at the same time on the same node, it's gonna uh, like be faster, safer, and easier. All right. And lastly, for other solutions, uh, lazy loading, NetSR also have uh, ERFS as a building solution for providing the read-only section. Okay, so much for the applications. We're gonna come to the roadmap of the ERFS. So firstly, uh, in the future, we're gonna fully enable large folio support for compressed data. And preliminary standard decompressor and compressor support is gonna be uh, built. And upstream Intel accelerator support is gonna, is, is, is where we're work, working on it. And upstream RENC page cache sharing support, uh, we're still working on that as well. And the preliminary of us run in kernel adaptation, uh, there are a group of students working on it. So, it's, so we we're still thinking about how we should progress on this uh, feature. All right, so much for the, that that's all we have to share today. Thank you for your uh, time and uh, any questions? Yep. Uh, how data integrity is managed when lazy loading is enabled? I mean, uh, when lazy when lo lazy loading a single file into the node, um, how that uh, how can runtime check that contents is actually expected one uh, based on the based on the digest of image manifest user specified like a current non lazy image. Uh, has completely um, like uh, everything is checked uh, using a digest. How is it done with uh, with uh, lazy, lazy loading with Eero FS? Yeah, I see what you're saying. Uh, I think that's a really good question. Uh, and I got one for you as well. You said like how you're gonna check the content you're trying to run with lazy loading is the correct data. So how are you gonna check you're running the correct data when you're not using lazy loading? Because like the only time you check your data is when unpacking the data. After unpack, unpacking the data, you're not checking anymore. So like after you already put the image, it's already unpacked, and you manually change the file in this snapshot, and you run this container, it's, it's gonna be compromised. So there, that, that's the main reason like why we don't have this uh, integrity checking of the, of, the, of the container image like in, in the current snapshot architecture. So we have a lot of maintainers here, so, so I think th this problem is gonna be, be addressed in the future, right? <laughs> I might need to add a word. So I think the data inter integrity might be a minor thing because that we have, we already have some te technology such as DMVR or uh, in the future maybe uh, Europe will have on, on its own built-in marker tree. But but that is uh, that is still in progress. Uh, and also that uh, uh, if you don't consider the lazy pulling, but such as a tar tar FS, you can you can pull. Pull the you can pull the blob uh, uh, convert into the euros blob and you can turn on FS variety or make it immutable file. So so the, 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 I think that is the advantage over the overlay FS. The one of the uh, advantage. Also, I, I, uh, also in addition, I'd like to one another word uh, be, uh, because uh, that is. Uh, one one block one one loop device. That is uh, maybe that is not true because that uh, uh, currently for each loop device uh, it will only have one file attached. So but so that is a kernel uh, limitation, but that is not a Europe's limitation. If you consider XFS or ButterFS or uh, other FS which supports reflink you could merge merge this file by reflink and use a uh, 
large large file, large merge file to attach the loop device. So you, you only have one device on, on this file system. But yet for doesn't support reflink. So that is a limitation. But, but the, I think that is a limitation of the loop device. So, but, but I'm not sure if kernel community uh, uh, will accept uh, attach more, multiple file opens, but that's the, the, so yeah, that's my word. So how it, how how the like a, each digest of each file contents is chained into the uh, manifest digest? So like a manifest contains all of the uh, file contents digest in, in the manifest, or their uh, like uh, they are chained via some other file metadata blob or something. Yeah, the architecture of the la uh, the layout of the image is still still like exactly same as previously for OCI images. You still gonna have w one digest for each layer, and each layer is gonna have this digest recorded in, in the manifest. So when you're pulling the image, you are still checking the integrity with this digest recorded in the manifest and the layers. Oh, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Uh, so um, on one of the slides you had, um, there was like a an offset for at the start for boot letter loaders and tar. Um, I think it was the format for the um, super block. Oh, yeah. um, is it possible? And maybe this is more of an academic question than whether it's a good idea or not. But could you take a tar file and then append? the arrowfs file system to the end of the tar file and then either do like a offset mount or uh, have some sort of pointer in the super block so that you could have a, both a tar file and an arrowfs file just kind of appended into one giant. You you mean the tar header is at first and the offset of yours is with the offset? Yeah, like because if you give it to like a tar, a naive tar program, it would just unpack as a tar, but then if you have I'm not sure if loop device support this feature, but uh, we, we, I think uh, we are same with SquashFS. If SquashFS okay. support yeah. it, I think maybe that is a loop, loop device feature. You can look into that. You can, you can look into the loop and with the offset, with the file offset. Yeah, you can totally do that with SquashFS where you do like a mount and you give it a mount option as an offset. Yeah, but, but yeah. I think that is not the feature of SquashFS, but loop device. Awesome, you could, okay, you, cool. You could look into it. I'll play around with that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any more questions? Yep. So NIDAS is having Eero FS plus FSCA support and uh, that over ABD is using TCMU. So what is the kind of, do you, are there any pros, cons about between those approaches? Uh, well, yeah, that's, that, that there are pros and cons. So firstly, for over BD, we can, uh, it's based on TCMU, which is current module, and and the whole the whole I/O progress is happening. I think that is not a technical problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. But but like still, like if you, if you're running fields, like when you, when your first field server is down, like you're gonna trap in this stage of your your progress, your your process. But like, if, you, if if it's based on block device, you have a device. Like your your, your process seems should be fine. And Thank you. Yeah. But like, yeah, the, there there are a lot of reasons happening because. <laughs> there's, there's also NBD too, right? Yeah, yeah NBD support. Yeah, and uh, let, uh, recently we also have a. Uh, Use a user space uh, virtual block device driver called uBlock. We also support it, but 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 that is, uh, I mean that that is only user space implementation. So that is uh, not related to Europe's. Uh, Europe can use any user block drivers if you want to import implement. Yeah. There's a question. Thank you for your talk. Um, one question I have, considering the embedded use case, did you do any benchmarking regarding memory and CPU usage? Uh, the embedded use case, you mean the overlap scenario? So, so using ROFS on an embedded device, like 
gotten EMMC, for example. Okay. Yeah. Let, let, let me let me answer the question. Uh, if you consider an embedded device, we have a paper. We have a de paper to detail, describe the CPU consumption and memory from place. Because that, uh, the, the original user scenario is Android. So, 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 so our, our key API is an application startup, such as camera in the heavy memory. You, you could look into that paper, it will have detailed data. So, but uh, I, I'd like to say that the most, uh, most Android device, such as Samsung, Huawei, and uh, other Oppo, Vivo, and other vendors, uh, both currently use Euros. So, so that's it. And a, li a little bit more on the NetApp question. Uh, so, like uh, for lazy loading, there are like multiple solution solutions for now, like so Sochi. Start easy and, and, and night us and over the BD. I, th I think I think the main, main main concept is kind of similar, and the, the main goal we're trying to achieve is like to uh, reduce the cold start time, and so I think this this diversity is definitely a good thing to to like push this progress. Uh, I, need, I may need to add a word. But, uh, apart from the block device interface, we also have FS cache. But, but uh, overly BD doesn't support FS cache, so so we only we only use the block device interface. Uh, but for the FS cache, you could look into more detail. But we we didn't cover in the in this topic. Yeah. yeah. Posting the like the project, where is it? Like, uh, which project? Like, you mean the the applications project or your face? The applications project. Application uh, for the TarFS snapshotter, we have a working PR currently happening in the community, and for the second implement uh, like this this scenario, it's not we don't have a working PR yet because like still tracking how this new format of OCI is going and we're going to adjust accordingly. But like after there's a more solid conclusion on this new format of, of the of the uh, OCI image or, or like like, like a, a better way to track this laser stuff or indexing stuff, we're, we're going to have a working PR for that. Yeah. 